Today we are going to be in Chapter 1, Section 4, The Real Number System. Today we have two topic objectives to cover. The first being identify common subsets of the real numbers, the natural numbers, integers, rational numbers, and irrational numbers. And the second objective will be to identify which common real number subsets a given real number belongs to. When we talk about the real number system, we are going to be talking a lot about sets. So we need to first define what a set is. A set is a collection of elements. A set is anything that you want to group up. It can be a set of cars, when we talk about words and things like that, a lot of times we just list them out like Ford and Chevy, Mini. And so a lot of times we just write them like that. But with numbers, you're going to use these curly brackets, which I know are hard to make, but you'll get used to them. And then you're going to list your numbers like 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then when you're done with your set, you're going to close your curly brackets. So each one of these numbers is an element in that set. You don't have to get super technical with this, but we will be covering many different sets. So it's good to understand that the curly brackets are signifying that this is a set of numbers or a collection of different elements and that each item within that set is its own element. Now that we know what sets are, we can start to talk about number sets. The first set of numbers we're going to talk about are the natural numbers. These are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and these three little dots mean that it goes on forever. So it means 6, 7, and 8 are also considered natural numbers. Sometimes you'll hear natural numbers referred to as the counting numbers. So that's just another name for the same set of numbers. After natural numbers are whole numbers. Whole numbers are all of the natural numbers with zero added in. Zero is the only element we're adding to that. And if you have a hard time remembering whether or not it's the natural numbers or the whole numbers that have the zero, think about the word whole. And it's kind of like you have a hole in the middle of it with your O and you also have the zero. So you have two different holes in there. After the whole numbers, we have the integers which are all of the whole numbers plus the negatives, negative one, negative two, negative three. Notice there's three dots going that way and there's three dots going this way. That means the integers go all the way down to negative infinity and they go all the way up to positive infinity. After the integers, we have what's called the rational numbers. This is the set of all numbers that can be expressed as a quotient or ratio of two integers with the um, one rule being that the denominator cannot be zero. So all of that is a really fancy way of saying that if you can write it as a fraction, then it's a rational number. Some examples are one half, the whole number two, because if you think about it, you can write two over one, which is a fraction, three over four, and negative 1.25. Because if you think about um, changing that into fraction form, that's basically one, negative one and three fourths. So you can still write that as a fraction. The last, um, well not the last set, another set of numbers that we're gonna talk about is the real numbers. This is the big one that comprises of all of these and it's a set of all numbers that can be represented on a number line. The last number set that we will discuss is called the irrational numbers. These are non-terminating, non-repeating decimal numbers. So those are some pretty big words to basically say that it's a decimal number that is going to go on forever and it's not going to repeat. If you type in one, one third in your calculator, it's going to tell you it's 0.3333 and the threes fill up your calculator. But that three keeps repeating forever. So that is a repeating decimal number. So that is not an irrational number. 
So these are going to be numbers like the ones listed here, negative square root of 10, negative square root of 3, square root of 2, square root of 5, square root of 12, and pi. If you punch in any of those on your calculator, you're going to see what I mean. It's going to go off of your calculator and none of those numbers are going to repeat. These are really the only ones you're going to ever see come up and you're only going to see them come up really whenever you're used to describe what an irrational number is. The big one that you use in math to play around with is pi. Pi is a special number. We usually think of it as 3.14. Okay, so now we know all of our different uh, number sets. We know about our natural numbers. We know about our integers, our whole numbers. We know about our rationals our irrationals, and our reals. If you remember, our real numbers are anything that you can make or you can put on a number line. Back in grade school, you probably remember doing these, and you'd have zero in the middle, and then you'd go one, and two, and three, and four, and you'd put your numbers on them. And sometimes you'd put your negative numbers on them. But basically, every single one of these that we talked about are naturals, or integers, whole, rationals, irrationals, and reals. All of those can be represented on this number line. I could put in a half here, and a half is a rational number. We wrote it as a fraction. Our irrational numbers even can go on here. We said that pi is equal to approximately 3.14. So I could go over to 3 and go over to about 1, 4, find a spot in there, and I could plug in pi. So you can represent them on a number line. It's just kind of difficult and weird to do that, so you don't usually put your rationals on there, but they can. So what that tells you is irrational numbers are also real numbers. So here's kind of a little tree thing that helps you to identify and remember what is and where, and then I'll show you a picture that helps as well. So we have our real numbers, and if you're a real number, either you are a rational number or an irrational number. You can't be a rational number and an irrational number. You have to be one or the other. So there's no other branches off of irrational. If you're irrational, you're irrational, that's it. But if you're rational, then you can be either an integer Or you can be what's called non-integers. We didn't really talk about those. You don't really have to worry about those for the purposes of this class. If you're an integer, then either you're a negative number or you're a whole number. I'll put a number sign out there. If you're a whole number, then either you are the naturals or you're the number zero. Remember the natural numbers were the, every, were the one, two, three, four, and then if you add the number zero in, then you get the whole numbers. So this tree kind of helps you to discern that. So if you are a natural number, that means you're a whole number, that means you're an integer, a rational number, and a real number. If, let's say, you're a negative number, you're an integer, rational, and a real number. But you can't be a negative number and be a natural number. This is a diagram that also shows the real numbers. It's exactly like the tree, only it's done with circles. So it probably feels like we've just been learning a whole bunch of definitions, but let's go ahead and open up our homework assignment and let's attempt some of these problems. We'll do them together if it'll open up. Loading, loading. Okay, so this is what your homework's going to look like. I know it seems like we just did only definitions today and that's kind of how this section goes. So your homework problems are going to be like this, where it says list the set of integers. So you have to remember, okay, what was an integer? 
what did the integers include? So were the integers just 1, 2, 3, 4? Were they 0, 1, 2, 3? Were they only the negatives? Or were they the negatives, 0, and the positives? So you kind of have to go back and look through your list again. Remember, the counting numbers or the natural numbers are the ones that started out here. Then you add in zero, which gives you the whole numbers. Negatives are just negatives. So then the last option would be this top one. When you have all of your whole numbers plus the negatives, that would be your integers. So we click that, hit enter. Nice work. We got it done. Let's see. Okay, here's another way that your questions are going to be asked. It's going to say, indicate whether the statement is true or false. Zero is a whole number. Remember my little trick about the word whole? Hopefully you do, and that'll help you answer that question correctly. Um, okay, negative 1.4 is a real number. Have we talked about any other numbers tonight except real numbers? That should be a trick question for you. 1.3 is an integer. So that's exactly how all your questions are going to be. You're going to read a statement and determine whether or not it's true or false. I really recommend going back and looking at those diagrams. I think it'll really help you through um, discerning whether or not some number is whatever type of number it's asking. Good luck on your homework and good luck on your quizzes.